sorry about this top being a pain in the ass. <sighs> Welcome to this week's video. As you can tell by the title, we're doing a tag. Thank God I got tagged in something finally. I was going to have to start begging. So, thank God for that. So, it is a mummy tag and that I can do, my friends, because I am a mum and I like talking about it and I hope to God some of you like listening. So, um, yeah, I got tagged in this by Baby Cheeks Beauty. Hi, Adrian. I bloody, I just, I love you. Okay, so basically I got tagged in this video and it's like 20 questions about being a mum and all that stuff. So, uh, let's jump right on into it. By the way, Adrienne's answers were amazing, so I don't want to watch it again because I just, I know I'll copy her answers because when I was watching it, I remember thinking, oh my god, spot on girl, because we are so alike. I don't know why I need to do this video, girl. <laughs> oh, okay. She said it was in her description, so if anybody wants to do this tag, I tag you. If you're a mum, congratulations, you got tagged. <laughs> do it. Girl, we're so close to 300 subscribers. Okay, the mummy tag. I love the way she says my name. 20 questions about being a mom, and I'm gonna tag all of you guys that are moms to also do this video. Liv, I'm talking to you, girl. Liv Kells is my YouTube best friend, Evs. Um, we just relate on such an amazing level. It's like we were meant to be best friends, but she lives in New Zealand and I live in the United States. So we're kind of like best friends through Snapchat. So, Liv, Liv? I challenge you to do this tag. Challenge. I see this tag on your channel. So I will leave the questions okay. written down in the description box so that you can also answer them. Liv, I want to see you do this. So. Okay. Fuck, I love her. Okay. okay. Question number one. How old were you when you had your first child? That one's easy. I was 22. I was turning 23, so I had her in August, and then I turned 23 in March, so I was late 22. What was the hardest thing about being pregnant for nine months? Um, I want to say back pain. I had probably from about three months onwards, um, I helped mum and dad move. Probably not a good idea to move boxes and stuff anyway, but I helped mum and dad move, and I niggled something in my back, and I knew we, you get a sore back during pregnancy anyway, and I went to the chiropractor, or it was not not chiropractor, I went to the physio, and I said, oh, I've hurt my back, right, right. She said, well, look, you basically sped up the inevitable. I feel like my top is falling down. She said, this was going to happen anyway. You just sped it up because you were being reckless, and you shouldn't have been lifting shit. So I would say back pain was the hardest thing in nine months and trying to get to sleep. So also like sitting in the car, like I had to travel to work for 45 minutes, it would just ache and ache and ache and ache. And I went to physio, there wasn't a whole lot they could do. Basically it was just the pressure. Ava was a giant baby. I'm not the biggest person. I guess just balance and, you know, science. Is it Newton's law? I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't good. Back pain, sleeping was fucking hard. I remember, you know, if you couldn't get comfortable, you had to pee. If you had to pee, then you had to try and get comfortable again. And it just wasn't the funnest time. Morning sickness, I didn't get it too bad. I got it enough to feel like queasy until up until like 16 weeks or something like that. Um, from 7 till 16 weeks, I was a wee bit queasy and would dry reach in the toilets at work. But that wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Right, number three. Can you think of any good things you enjoyed during those? Can you think of any good things during those nine months? Of course, I was growing a baby. Um, good things was well, I didn't know the gender, so I can't even say that was one. Like looking forward to what we're having. Um, a good thing during those nine months, I felt like I could eat what I liked, even though don't do that. You gain. I used to just oh oh another thing in the last question heartburn. Heartburn was so bad. I got that very early on. It wasn't too bad that I was hospitalized. Some of my friends went to hospital for having heartburn that bad. I didn't get it that bad, but it was bad enough to keep me up at night. And I remember just sucking or sticking Gaviscon, the heartburn lollies, heartburn, what's it called? Digestion, digestion. Sucking the lollies up in my gum so that whenever I swallowed at night, it would keep it down. Otherwise, it would keep me awake. Torture. And they tasted so gross, like sitting chalk in your mouth. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so something good in those nine months. The fact that you're pregnant and you've got a baby coming along, that like gets you through um, getting out of certain jobs at work. So like, oh, Liv, I'll lift that for you. I'm like, 
I can totally lift it, but okay, you can, oh yeah, no, I definitely, you can do that. I got out of a few jobs, actually, like, you know, sweet. And like, if you sleep in, it's like, oh, she's pregnant, it's all good. Not really, don't do that. Um, four, in your opinion, were all the things you heard about childbirth accurate or way off? Everything about childbirth, not like pregnancy, um, everything I heard about childbirth was pretty accurate. Um, I tried not to listen to gory horror stories or anything like that, even though I knew what they were, like tearing, pooping, all that stuff. Um, but I did try and like stay away from refreshing my brain of those thoughts. <sighs> I don't know, my mum sort of prepared me really, we were very open and she told me, you know, burning of the head coming and, um, I don't know, it, w it wasn't accurate and it wasn't, I was prepared I would say, like I knew it wasn't going to be a walk in the park, let's be honest. Sorry, I can't read, I've got my glasses on, all my contacts. Five, would you have handled childbirth differently if you could redo it? Um, so I watched Adrian's birth story. Um, thing and she basically said she got the epidural and it was like amazing and she really really enjoyed childbirth that way um, but then she said like with the um, the needle going in for the epidural and everything like that it was a wee bit scary and the catheter afterwards like I don't know sort of balances itself out um, I mean given the chance maybe I might do epidural but I doubt it I think it's probably more hassle than it's worth and when you're in the mood in the moment and everything like that you sort of just go with it I think I would have eaten more. I went into labour at 3am in the morning, um, my waters broke, and I didn't eat. I was just like focused on, you know, contractions and everything like that, but I wish I had eaten more. Because I ended up having Chris feed me crackers during labour and then throwing them back up on him. So, yeah. Um, things I could redo differently. Eat and... I think I had a great labour and I honestly don't think I would redo it. I had a really good labour. I only tore on the inside minor. Um, I really think I did a good good job with that nine pound three baby. So don't think I'd redo it. But maybe get an epidural because it would be less daunting. Because I don't really want to have another baby anytime soon because I know it ain't it's gonna hurt. <laughs> what would be your advice to someone who is about to have a baby? Uh, the video when I first started my channel and I basically said you know what I would do. So if you haven't seen that one already, do watch that. Do watch that. Um, I think I said most of what I needed to say about like advice wise, but basically my advice is just roll with it. Whatever comes your way, don't stress. And that is so much easier said than done, but I'm the biggest stressor and I, that's my advice is to roll with it. You literally can't control anything, so just do what you gotta do. It's not about you anymore, it's about getting that baby out, it's about enjoying your baby, so. Seven, what has been the hardest thing about being a mum? Uh, probably that feeling of being a shit mum, even though you know deep down you're a good mum, but occasionally, you know, you get this, oh, this thing of being a shit mum. I wanna say sleep. The hardest thing about being a mum is making sure you have enough sleep and that you're mentally able for your child and for yourself. We'll leave it at that one. <laughs> Sleep. Um, what has been the most rewarding thing about being a mum? Um, obviously, and I think this was Adrian's answer, is seeing them grow. I think that's a really, really obvious answer. But aside from seeing them grow, the most rewarding thing would be um, her saying mum and like coming up to you and knowing that your mum, I couldn't wait for that actually when she was a newborn. I couldn't wait for her to recognise me as her mum. And like when you come home from the grocery store or something and they get that big smile and you know, you know that what you're doing is right because they love you so and they, they're happy to see you. I think that's pretty special. I think that's been pretty rewarding is her coming up and going, mum, giving you kisses. It's just, yeah, that's rewarding. Okay, um... What was the most surprising thing you discovered about being mum? I think it was definitely lack of sleep. You know, you hear stories like, oh, be prepared to, you know, have fuck all sleep. Um, yeah, it's less than fuck all. It's, even now, Ava's a year old and I still wake up exhausted and I only get up to freaking give her a bottle. I'm, I get up in the middle of the night and make her a bottle. I think it's because you're not on your time. I said, like, you know, oh, I think I'll get out of bed now lies there for another 20 minutes I might get out of bed now that's not the case you've got a little human that depends on you and obviously you know that that's the case but you don't know it until you're doing it 
that how much of a wake up call it is how much of a wake up call it is that you know you're needed and you're dependent upon for this little innocent like they can't do anything you are that's your job is to literally keep them alive and I think I don't know when I thought oh, I'll have a baby I always thought you sort of got given them at the age Ava is now so like you know but you don't you get given this tiny little potato and it needs fed change bloody it gets diarrhea you got a google symptoms their life depends on you and that I don't know I knew it was gonna happen but it was still a wake-up call so that's my answer to that question what is the best memory you have involving your child oh, I remember Adrian's answer being really good to this one the best memory I have with Ava would be, um, we actually had a really cute moment today, but it wasn't the best moment, but she's getting into that age where she's a bit more rough and tumble now, so like I was tackling her onto the bed, she's rolling around like the bed wasn't made, so duvet was everywhere, she's rolling around, I push her back down, she's laughing, I'm laughing, like, yeah, and then we had a moment like that, so that was like actually only today, and then a couple of months ago, it was when, um, we were playing on the ground, she was laughing and I was laughing and we sort of just like had this moment and I looked into her eyes and I was just like, this is what I wanted. This, I finally, like, I didn't finally get what I wanted, but like, with postnatal depression and everything like that, obviously motherhood wasn't what I, not what I expected, but I felt like I got a shit deal. Um, and it all sort of just didn't matter anymore and I was like this is the part of parenthood that I had been dreaming of and it had hit me and in that moment I wasn't depressed and I wasn't like stressing out it was just me and her and we were laughing and I started crying and yeah that was my moment I don't really know how to explain that and if that came out well enough but that was my most favorite moment all of that, lots of things like when she started walking when she started crawling when she said mum for the first time when she said dad like all these fun things but that is the one thing that I just remember her and I playing on the floor no one else is home Chris is at work we're playing she actually made me laugh like she had done something funny I was just laughing and she was laughing and we looked at each other and we cried and I could cry thinking about it right now but I'm not going to. Okay. Um, <laughs> what is the most exciting milestone? Definitely walking. They're so cute. They get this little waddle on and their little legs are like bowed. Like, <laughs> so cute. Definitely walking. Um, when they hug you. Or when they kiss you. I had Ava kiss me for the first time just a couple weeks ago and that was really nice. I've just she started going like this, mwah, mwah, like making noises. So I started going mwah, mwah, and then I would go up to her and go mwah, mwah, and now I can put my cheek beside her and she goes wow. It's like me. <laughs> so yoked. Okay. What is the worst thing your child has ever done? Okay, Adrian also had a really good answer for this answer for this one. Ava hasn't really done anything that's like terrible. Um, I'm trying to think of the worst thing she's ever done. Um, I want to say shitting in the bath, but every kid does that. But I honestly hate it so much when she shits in the bath because I don't know. Well, we don't have a bath. We've got a shower and we sit a tub inside it. So when she shits, I've either got to get like my hand in there in the tub and scoop it out or empty the tub and like let it go into the shower and then scoop it up in the shower box. Oh, there's just no good way to get rid of a poo. If you have a good hack to get rid of kid poo in the bath, let me know. Um, she hasn't done anything. It's nothing like Adrian's story. Adrian's story is epic, so go watch hers once again. Um, she eats the dog food occasionally and like tips the tips the dog bowl out. Nothing major. Pretty good. We've been pretty lucky she hasn't done anything too crazy. What habit did you wish your child didn't have? Um, I actually noticed her doing this the other day and I don't know if it's a fluke or what, but I have a terrible habit of picking my finger. I'll be doing it this entire video actually. Picking my fingers and the skin around my fingers. And I'm sorry if that puts you off me, but hey. I'm a realsy person and that's just like, people are different. Um, and I, I pick the skin around my nails and it is a gross habit. Um, but I'll sit there and watch TV just like this. Even when I'm talking, most of the time, I have my fingers together, rubbing, picking. And then at night, I don't do it on camera or anything like that, but at night I'll sit there and rub the stiffs 
<laughs> that sounds so gross, the stiff skin against my lip and it catches on my lip and that's my thing and that's my habit that I wish I didn't have but at the same time it's very soothing for me. Um, so I actually caught her the other day where her and I were sitting on the couch and she was rubbing her thumb like me and I was like because you know how kids watch you and you don't know they're watching you and they're like little sponges and they just absorb things and I think maybe she thinks that's how we're supposed to sit there and watch TV so I don't know and I did notice she had little skin around her finger so I don't know um, another habit she kind of has is um, yeah we'll have to go with that one because I can't think of anything else oh a bad habit uh, probably most kids probably do this is throw their food off their fucking high chair that drives me nuts and she tries to feed the dog, so yeah. Okay, a, 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 a good habit. Um, I think she's very polite and she's great with animals. Is that a habit? <laughs> no. Do you share any similarities with your child, both physically and personal uh, personality? Okay, um, obviously the main one is hair colour. We're both gingies. I don't think she could have escaped that one if she tried, but I am glad that, you know, she got it. Um, cause I think gingers are making a comeback and I'm gonna help that. We're, we're gonna make a comeback. Um, I think she's gonna be pretty fun like me. So Chris can be fun, but he's the more serious one of the two. Like he's the responsible adult one. Um, so I think she's gonna be fun little wild card. Personality wise, she's a wee chatterbox like me. Chris is very, mm -hmm. unless it's just us two, but um, he's very like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas she's gonna be like, ah, yeah, yeah, like me. Um, so I think that the ginger here, but she totally just looks like Chris. Like when they frown, when she smiles, she's me. When they, when she frowns, she's Chris. She's all Chris, and that's what everybody says. And that they say it like an insult, like, oh, she's just all Chris, isn't she? It's like, oh. where would I like my child to be in ten years? So she'll only be eleven. So like Adrian said, in school. Um, but I want her to be happy, confident. I want her to be confident in her own skin, I don't really like good in school and um, like playing a sport or something and I want her and I to have an amazing relationship like what me and my mum have. I want us at 11, I want her to tell me everything. Like 11, 12, she might be starting to go through puberty. I want us to talk about everything and be close, happy mum, daughter relationship. That's what I want. <laughs> what is something that having a child has taught you? Adrian's answer was patience. I guess you could say that's one for me as well. I mean, most people learn patience through having a baby. Um, being mum's taught me to be patient, to be kind. Um, she's watching every move that I make, so I've got to be a better person, so I'm learning to be better. So when we go to the park and she runs up to someone, and I don't particularly want to talk to that somebody, you know, I'm polite, I'm almost polite, but I'm polite and I make a point of talking because, you know, my daughter's watching me and I'm her role model and I, everything I do from here on out um, is sort of going to be as her role model, so. Being a mother has taught me to be a better person. Did you imagine that you'd be a mum at the age you became? Basically, yes, I always sort of had the age 22 in my head. Much, yeah, 22. And then sometimes I changed it to na 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 later, 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 but it's always been 22, so nailed it. Um, describe your child in a single sentence. Oh my god. Ava is an amazingly cute, smart, funny, kind, gentle little girl. And I love her. Okay. And have you changed as a person since becoming a mum? Now, Adrian's answer to this was a good one. It says, like, I could not agree more because she said, like, when you see a young child get hurt on TV, you're a lot more sympathetic for them or you hear about something on the news and you, like, before you had a kid, you're just like, oh. But now, like Adrian said, you think of that happening to your kid and it hits home a wee bit more and you know you can sort of just you know so that's changed since becoming a mum um i don't think i've really changed that much i went through the postnatal depression i think that helped me a wee bit i think um everyone in their life sort of needs to hit a low otherwise they don't appreciate the highs um but i wouldn't really recommend going through that like it wasn't a nice experience but i think it's helped who i am 
So if Ava ever comes to me like, Mum, I'm not feeling myself, I'm sad, I'm this, I'm that, I've been through it, so therefore I can sort of offer some advice, you know? I'm a lot more confident because I have a little girl looking up to me, so I need to be confident for her to aspire to be that confident. I'm a mum now, you listen to me. Yeah. And having a kid, having a child, has made me realise that I can do anything because the experience of labour is life changing. Um, and I realise that my body can do anything, I can do anything. And it sort of just opened my eyes a lot more to life and the meaning of life. So, um, it's made me a better person. That's the end of this video. Thank you, Adrian, for the tag. I tag all my mummy friends out there. If you want to do it, the tag and the questions will be in the description below. Thank you, Adrian, for tagging me. I did enjoy doing this video. Although, I do think that you basically said everything that I needed to say. So, if you haven't yet, go and check out Adrian and check out her, take her mummy tag, because it was amazing. And I really, really thoroughly enjoyed her answers. So, thank you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Mwah.